the joy of the Lord. Sorry. God, I think for this year, the joy of the Lord. Joy is that positive expression, the experience of the believer that God is. Joy, we equate with gladness, cheer, delight, and celebration. But joy is more than just an emotional feeling or a psychological affirmation or a physiological reaction. Joy is joy. And joy is sustained through the vicissitudes of life. We have seen thus far that in the Gospel of John, Jesus said to the disciples, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome. And so, Jesus overcoming the world. We're in Christ, and Christ is in us. So then we have the occasion to be of good cheer, to have joy. We also saw that Jesus said to the disciples that it was his desire that that joy be full. We saw that he reiterated to the disciples that the joy that he gave, that no man can take it, that joy. We saw in the book of Galatians that God, as a part of what the fruit of the Spirit produces in our lives, the lives of the believer, joy is among those nutrients that the Holy Spirit produces in the life of the believer. Uh, we saw in Psalm 122 that there was a, a joy and happiness about coming to church. Well, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said it to me that they going to the house of the Lord. We also saw in our last gathering, Psalm 51, where David wrote and asked the Lord to restore unto him the joy of salvation. A song, a song is a poem uh, sung and often with musical accompaniment. The focus of the song is the worship of God. The book of Psalms is often referred to as the hymn book of the Bible. There are different uh, perspectives that the psalm gives. The psalm gives the individual perspective, but it also gives corporate perspective. Because while we have individual experiences with the Lord, we also come together collectively to worship. And so the psalms give both individual and uh, corporate perspective. There are praise songs, there are songs of thanksgiving, and there are songs of prayer. There are songs where the writer is identified. There are some where the writer is not identified. Where the type of song or, or song is a prayer, You'll find that there's prayers of deliverance, there's prayer of intercession, and then there are prayers of penitence. And it's that that we want to focus on in Psalm 32 today as we did in Psalm 51. For David is the writer of Psalm 32 as was David in Psalm 51. Many scholars, though not uh, specifically dated. Psalm 32 is believed by some scholars uh, to have been penned by David after uh, Psalm 51 uh, because of the structure and what is contained there in Psalm 32. Remember in Psalm 51 it was a song of confession by David. David confessed his sin. He repented of his sin, and then he requested of the Lord to restore him to that place of fellowship where he was with God before he sinned. So David confessed, repented, and then asked for restoration. Remember Psalm 51, David said, have mercy, Lord. He said, wash me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. Renew the right spirit in me, Lord. Uphold me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. You see, when we come to grips with 
our sin and we go to God, we got to go to God right. Yeah. You got to call it like it is, man. You got to gotta say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Stand in this belief of prayer. But then at the end, toward the end of Psalm 51, remember, David made a promise and a commitment. He said, Lord, now, if you do all that for me, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach transgressors your way. And I'm going to be a, a magnet to draw sinners unto you. I'm going to use my life to show others that it is no secret what God can do. But what he's done for others, he'll do it for you. But the Lord's wide open, he'll call on you too. It is no secret what God can do. And so that is the backdrop then of Psalm 32. So now if in fact this is written after Psalm 51, we might title this psalm The Teacher's Testimony. Uh -huh. the, te the Teacher's Testimony. Mm -hmm. He began by saying, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. The way to get to forgiveness is to acknowledge the sin. Amen. Don't walk around, want God to forgive you, and you won't even repent of the sin. So is that a better way to Yeah, you know. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guidance. That simply means no deception. That when you go and talk to God, you got to talk to God like you know God already knows what's going on. Amen. Watch this, y'all. There's some folk in Washington, D.C. that's been called uh, to have to give testimony to law enforcement officers. Right. That the law enforcement officers already had certain information that they had gotten. And so when they asked the question, they were just trying to see whether or not the people were going to tell the truth, right? Yeah. So now the fact that they went in there and told an untruth right. in front of, in the presence of the law enforcement officer, even if the law enforcement officer can't get them on the crime for which he came to question them on, he can get them for the fact that they sat there and went to tell the truth. Have I not hid? I said, 
listen to this. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Yes, sir. You see, church, God is merciful yeah. and gracious. And so normally, 
they say the, the guy's going to shoot the ball, he would come and, and he would uh, run through a screen and they were going to pass him the ball and he was going to get a jump shot. <coughs> but the guy with the ball made eye, eye contact with him. Didn't say a word. Just dribbling the ball, running that same play. Play number one. Play number two. Running that same play they run all game long. But this time he makes eye contact. And so now the guy that normally, the whole game he's been coming off the screen and he's been hitting that jump shot. He fakes like he's going to come off the screen. The other team overplayed him. But they knew it was coming. But what he did was he stopped and he went the opposite direction. The guy with the ball just threw it up there. He caught it, laid it up. The buzzer sound, in the game, they win. Yeah. Eye contact. All it was, was eye contact. After the game, when interviewed, the announcer asked, well, how did y'all know to run that play? At that moment in time. Because y'all been running that play the whole game, and you've been coming off the screen shooting jump shot. So the announcer wants to know what happened. They say to the announcer, "We played together for so long." <laughs> what would be y'all? Right. We played together for so long that when I saw that they were going to overplay it, I just made eye contact. And when he saw me make eye contact. He just knew to pivot and go to the best. When you walk in with the Lord, yes, and you got good relationship with the Lord. Y'all been together a long time. Lord, to the point, God, you're in the love. He controls it all. Now, if you don't throw it, you can't shoot it. And that's but because he wants you to score and win, he makes eye contact. Now you gotta know, don't keep flaring out for the jump shot. You gotta know, it's time to not go this way, but that way. Always of eye contact. The Lord says, I guide you with my eyes. Talk to the Lord, and the Lord talks to us. Yeah. He said, now don't be 
like a horse, and don't be like a mule. Yes, Interesting combination yes, of what the Lord tells us not to be like. Yes. Don't be like a horse. Yes. Don't be wild. Yes. Running wild. Yes, Act like can't nobody contain you. Y'all yes, see how those horses are when they have them in the rodeo yes, and they come out of the stall. And they just, they just going, 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 going. The Lord said, don't be like that. When you belong to the Lord, you got to have some control in your life. Don't act like a horse that you got to put a foot, a bit, and a bridle in it. But you ought to be bitter. But he said, now not just don't be like wild like the horse. He said, now don't be like a few. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. Yes, sir. Often in television, you see the mule, and he's supposed to be carrying a load. And he gets there in the middle of the road and decides to stop. Yes, no matter how, how hard he put it. Yes, sir. Come on, man. We got somewhere to go. Stuff. God said this, church, don't be like a horse, don't be wild, undisciplined. But then he said, don't be like the mule and be stubborn. Set in your way. Don't ever want to change. Everything around you got to change. Because you hear the piano playing, 